Good ninjas, OJ over here from Player Essence, and welcome to my village of Nintendo Switch and gaming news. Today we've got some awesome information for you, so let's go ahead and get right into it. So Nintendo has finally revealed the Mario Kart 8 website. Now it's not the full thing, but they have a teaser site up, but you can check out screenshots in addition to some new information or more like retread of information on the game. So let's go over some of the stuff on the site. So it says race and battle your friends. Compete on the couch or on the go. Hit the road with the definitive version of Mario Kart 8 and play anytime, anywhere. Race your friends or battle them in a revised battle mode on new and returning battle courses. Play locally in up to 4 player multiplayer in 1080p while playing in TV mode. Every track on the Wii U version including DLC makes a glorious return. Plus, the Inklings appear as all new guest characters, along with returning favorites such as King Boo, Dry Bones, and Bowser Jr. And they have the pre-orders where you can get it, US retailers, Canadian ones, says the platform Nintendo Switch, release date April 28th. Of course, April 28th is the solid release date for the game, 2017, up to 12 players. Of course, it's a racing game, Nintendo is publishing and developing it. And here are some of the extra features that are listed on the site. And it says, of course, only on the Nintendo Switch. Race as every character on every track from the Wii U version, including DLC characters and tracks. Pop some balloons in the revamped battle mode, complete with Balloon Battle and Babom Blast. Battle on new courses like Urchid Underpass and Battle Stadium, or returning ones such as Nintendo GameCube Luigi's Mansion and Super NES Battle Course 1. Inkling Girl and Inkling Boy from Splatoon, King Boo, Dry Bones, and Bowser Jr. join the roster. Players can choose a new smart steering feature, which makes driving and staying on the track easy for novice players and kids, even at 200cc. Play your friends in local wireless multiplayer up to 8 players. Drive through in 1080p HD quality in TV mode. Play on the go with handheld mode and play anytime, anywhere. So there is going to be more stuff that they add but so far that is the teaser site and it's actually looking really good. Love the artwork in the back and I'm really excited for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe on the Nintendo Switch. I'll be having tournaments in addition to a new campaign bringing back PE Arena for this game and other ones so look forward to that. I think we're going to have a ton of fun running tournaments on player essence. So let me know what you guys think about Mario Kart. 8 Deluxe in the comment section below. Alright, next we have some expanded comments from Square Enix's CEO in addition to a little bit of a correction to one of the last articles I did when I talked about Square Enix CEO saying that they're going to support it more than the Xbox Scorpio. So let's go ahead and get into this actual interview and what he said here. This translation is from Nintendo Everything as far as where I got this article from. So let's get into what Square Enix CEO Yosuke Matsuda had to say. Our developers with a strong interest in Switch are eager to challenge themselves to find new ways for people to play games. Having more gaming platforms available is a good thing for us. I really want the Switch to succeed. We'll be developing new titles and we'd like to port existing titles that the Switch can support often as we can. Nintendo creates a variety of new gameplay possibilities. I think other companies will come up with some surprising gimmicks using Nintendo Switch's unique capabilities. We have our own way of doing things, so we'll be marrying the Switch's unique features to the kinds of games we're known for. Nintendo Everything also had this to add, saying that we do also want to take this opportunity to clarify something about this interview. Some translations had Masuda as saying Square Enix is prioritizing Nintendo Switch over other platforms such as the Xbox Scorpio. However, this was simply not said. Matsuda's enthusiasm for the Nintendo Switch is clear, but no comments were made about Square Enix focusing on the system over others. So, slight little retraction there, but that's okay. It seems Seems like Square Enix will be bringing their classic franchises in addition to some new titles over to the Nintendo Switch. They're looking at bringing over new titles such as games like Project Octopath in addition to ports of games Nintendo Switch can do. So I think this is actually really good. It sets a good precedent for what we can probably see going forward. We already have I Am Setsuna and a few other games coming over from Square Enix. Project Octopath Traveler is a brand new game from the Bravely Default team that's going to be coming over as well. So there's a lot of stuff going on with the Nintendo Switch at Square Enix. They understand the appeal of the system. Obviously being able to take a game anywhere you want is very big in Japan and a lot of the trends that go on in Japan when it comes to game taste with Square Enix really translate over to the Western markets as well. I think games like Project Octopath are going to be a huge hit 
on the Nintendo Switch. Much bigger than what people are thinking. And that classic RPG feel that people have been really longing for that hasn't been here for a while, I'm glad that it's coming to the Nintendo Switch as exclusive. So we'll see what happens going forward. I think we should get some ports as well, like they said here. Obviously the big ones are Kingdom Hearts 3, Final Fantasy 7, Final Fantasy 15. Those are the type of games that people would like to see. So we'll see if those ones come over, but I do feel that especially ones made with Unreal Engine 4, those are going to be a very high possibility to be on the Nintendo Switch, especially if the sales trend continues to be at where it's at. All right, I'm moving on to the next article here. We have a little bit of an expansion on the Japanese teardown where we talked about the price of the Nintendo Switch as far as the components go. So the same Japanese firm actually goes into greater detail on the Nintendo Switch pricing and they also see the possibility of an upgraded dock. So like a supplemental computing device built in to the dock. So let's go ahead and get into this here. So the Nintendo Switch tablet and dock cost is about $167. Two Joy-Cons cost roughly $90. Since each Joy-Con contains 20 small parts, those contribute to the expenses. The HD Rumble vibration motor might be made by Alps Electric. Nintendo Switch's main circuit board has an unknown big IC in its lower section. On the reverse side of the IC, there is a connector which goes to the cart slot. Either the IC conducts certification of the game card or is involved in saving. They see the possibility of an enhanced dock which contains a dedicated VR slash AR processing unit or extra large storage, has a next gen power delivery unit and is capable of receiving maximum of 100 watts, so 20 volts slash 5A using USB PD. This is possible because of ROHM's power receiver delivery controller IC. It can raise the USB-C power received delivery capabilities from the standard 3 volts slash 7.5 watts to 5 volts slash 100 watts. In the disassembled dock circuit board, you can see that USB Type-C power delivery part is made by ROHM. It has a ceiling M92T36, but the actual name is BM92T17. The Nintendo Switch tablet is thicker than most tablets due to the radiation and battery precautions. It has a 5.8 millimeter thickness and is thicker than the standard laptop or tablet battery. It seems Nintendo made the important parts around the battery thicker to make it possible to charge while staying safe. So this is actually very interesting information if it is to be 100% believed. The fact that they're saying that it costs around $90 for these Joy-Cons, that Nintendo's only selling them for $79.99, I'm not so sure about that. So I wouldn't necessarily believe everything that's in here, but it is interesting to get a little bit more insight into this since nobody else has really done it at this point. I do feel that there is a couple cool things in here, like we've all talked about the possibility of a supplemental computing device that has already been in there, but it just depends on when that's going to come and how that's going to come on the Nintendo Switch as far as what Nintendo is going to do to put that in there. We know that Nintendo is going to upgrade this system in some way, shape, or form, whether it's through the actual tablet itself or through the dock or through selling the dock separately. There's going to be something that Nintendo does in order for this system to have revisions like they've always done with any type of device that has a portable capability. So this just basically reconfirms that if you're to believe what this is entailing. But I personally feel that yes, we will see some type of supplemental computing device in the future, some type of add-on. I think that the Nintendo Switch is dynamic when it comes to things because there's so many different things that you can do with the Joy-Cons, sliding them on and off, having different types of peripherals. It's very dynamic. So I do feel that there is going to be more stuff that we're going to see and I think future Nintendo Directs or E3s they can definitely reveal some of that but right now the Nintendo Switch is selling really good just based on its concept of being able to take games anywhere that you want in a really nice screen and actually be able to play like tabletop mode play like a normal handheld also have the TV mode so I think that's really what's pushing the system in addition to the lineup of first party content that's going to be coming to the system in a far better flow than we got with the Wii U and even with the Nintendo 3DS at the very beginning of the system's life. So we're looking forward to seeing what Nintendo does in the future. Obviously the sky's the limit when it comes to these type of things. But once again, like I said, you can't 100% believe everything. I would just say this kind of gives us a general idea of what's going on with the Nintendo Switch when it comes to the actual teardown of the system. All right guys, that wraps it up for this video here. Go ahead and hit that like button if you did like it. Let's me know you guys want more content that's going forward in the future. And subscribe Subscribe to Player Essence for the latest news, reviews, discussions, and more. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll catch you ninjas for the next video. Peace.